Hello, I'm uh, Karol Hudo, uh, born in Goik in this small village and still here uh, with all my barrels full of lambic. Um, how we are doing since COVID? Well, uh, it goes up and down. Uh, COVID was okay because a lot of people were thirsty and into lambic, they came around. But when uh, all those wars starting all over the, the, the world, then uh, ingredients started to become much more expensive and uh, then the markets also is very fluid. So it goes up and down, but we will manage. And it's been how many years since you took over DCAM? Well, it must have been uh, end of the 90s and officially from 2000s. And what change have you seen in the whole girls market and in yourself? How have you developed <laughs> this? How, how did it change? Well, let's say that end of the 90s, uh, Armand de Belder uh, from Drie Fontaine, I was uh, doing uh, my final study project at the uh, microbrewery of Drie Fontaine. And at the end of that year, he could not pay me. Can you imagine? So that's how uh, uh, worse the, the time was for Lambic in end of the 90s. Um, so I did for more than 20 years as a secondary job, uh, I did this Lambic thing because I didn't want this uh, heritage to go away, to disappear. Um, but uh, yeah, then internet and all the social media came along and in fact that saved us. We could uh, tell our story, our true story from the heart, from the passion for this authentic product of spontaneous fermentation to the whole wild world. And um, apparently uh, we were not the only one on earth, not only Armand and me, but a lot of other people that also liked this kind of flavors you have in Lambic, which is the missing link between beer and wine but you have to get into it, you have to dig into it. And now we have a lot of uh, people loving the true Lambic. What has been your style in developing and your knowledge of it? Uh, how have you developed the style? Developed the style? Or put whatever it is. What is your belief that it has to be authentic? What, what does it mean? Well, that we only brew when it's the coldest period of the year and with the climate uh, warming up, uh, the season of brewing Lambic has become shorter and shorter. So uh, um, I don't want it to be a fast selling product. No, you have to respect nature and then nature respects you by giving a lot of flavors in return. If you respect it, the traditions of uh, how uh, nature works and how that spontaneous fermentation works from the cool ship on. And what, what is your capacity now? How much are you selling, say, a year or producing a year? Well, in uh, normal years, we're producing only as a one-man blendery, because it's only me uh, drinking and filling bottles and labeling and uh, uh, whatsoever, even more. So in a normal year, I do 35,000 liters, something like that. And where is most of it still? Is it still Belgium or are you expanding to outside? Since no. your name is becoming really well, you know, you're one of the stalwarts of the girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so there is a lot of demand from other countries. But every time you want to uh, give them some Lambic beers, uh, there is a lot of administration concerned. So I was not so uh, into uh, uh, selling a lot of Lambic to other countries. Um, but uh, because of uh, all the problems we had uh, the past years, now we do, and it goes from South Korea to Norway to US, uh, to, yeah, wherever they want it. Are you interested in expanding, or do you like the size you are right now? I like the size I am right now. I don't want to expand because, uh, but I want to uh, put the quality even higher. That's what I want, but not the volume. Uh, but the products and the, the endless uh, uh, possibilities that you have with, with Lambic is, is incredible. So that's, we want to make sure we can make that even better. Uh, buying even better barrels, buying 
uh, working with, with uh, other fruits from the region. Now uh, you have a lot of uh, vineyards here in the, in the region. In, the, in my own village here in Goik, I have five vineyards. So why I should not work with those grapes uh, at 500 meters from, from my door? So uh, that's, that's what's interesting me. And uh, uh, of course also the, the strange thing what's happening with nature. You know, there is a lot of uh, strange uh, micro uh, uh, flies coming into Europe that doesn't belong here and destroy our authentic fruits. Like uh, Creek, yeah, the cherry is being attacked by a Japanese fruit fly. And so we have to uh, make sure that we can uh, conquer that kind of uh, disease and that kind of things. So to make uh, real good uh, products. So this is the way you see, uh, improving the quality, maintaining the style. Oh, in the girls' world, Lambic producing world, what are the changes you've seen and what are some that you don't think fit the style or in the tradition? Well, that's uh, very obvious, of course. Everything like a goes on draft does not fit the tradition. If you were talking about spontaneous, uh, fermentation and re-fermentation bottle condition then uh, you cannot have it in a keg uh, then it's controlled then you uh, filter it and you pasteurize it and you make a beautiful living product which is lambic you make it that product and that I don't agree with I will, and I will never so how do you get the word out that, you know, with all this, exper some may call it, we're experimenting, we're being more open to a market that's widening in taste and beginning to accept again the Gerses, the Lambics. How do you react to that from, you know, because there are well-known producers that we all know that yeah. they're all traditionalists, but they are changing, I guess, to try well, and expand the market, but... My message to them is we have built up a beautiful house, which is the, the, the traditional product Lambic, and now they are destroying it by uh, taking a brick and, and throwing it through their, the windows of that beautiful house. Uh, you have, you don't, you cannot lose your identity as a traditional spontaneous fermented product, which is Lambic. Of course, now you have so much possibilities, but if you lose your identity, then you, you're nothing anymore. That's how I see it. So you think uh, perhaps, uh, how do you get them to move away from that? I mean, it started, it probably can't be stopped. Mm -hmm. Or do you just uh, team up with those who are in that kind of philosophy? Because I guess Horal, which is, as we know, the umbrella organization for many or most of the Lambic producers, girls producers and the blenderies, mm -hmm. they have, I guess they don't have a, a strict uh, idea of how this should be. And I guess it also hurts your, if you want to get it as a designated, Lambic protected, right? The name is already protected as a mm -hmm. geographical mm -hmm. by the EU. Yeah, it's, it's protected by Belgian law. You know how Belgian politics works? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know how Belgian politics works and how politics works in general, then you know that, that uh, protection of Lambic is so ridiculous. Uh, you can only protect something by passing by the big breweries. Which are the big breweries? They are not interested in the traditional goods, not interested in the traditional lambic. They want to make big money. That's the only interest that they have. And so that's uh, another thing. So uh, what I believe is that we should have been protected by UNESCO, which is a total other organization than uh, passing by politics. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, a struggle, a struggle for life, I suppose, but uh, they won't uh, get me down. I will not be depressed each day, by, uh, but I, I won't give up my fight uh, against the, the cheating on the, the consumers, you know? Because for me, the, 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 the true rights are for the consumers, the, the, the true believers in traditional Lambic. And uh, what they are doing is cheating on those people, and that's, that's a shame. 
What about uh, overseas? You know, they're respecting the name Lambic, but many brewers are now doing these wild fermented beers. Do you see that as good or, you know, people experimenting with the style? Well, th that's, that's okay for me. But what I think is really strange that the word wild is not so wild when you buy some Brettanomyces or other uh, microorganisms or yeasts from the internet and you add it to it, there is nothing wild about it. So, uh, yeah, um, let them call it uh, something uh, really ridiculous uh, or, uh, but uh, yeah, let's, let's, I, uh, I'm really happy that until now the name Lambic is still uh, being respected among the world and that uh, people come to, to Pajotoland, to this region, uh, for discovering the real product. We know, uh, you know, at the end, how do you want yourself to, and the uh, contribution you've made to Gers and Lambic, how do you want to be seen in your heritage, let's say, what you have contributed and passed on? Say when you're 80 or 90. <laughs> yeah, it's still a long way to go. But let's say that um, this product exists since the Middle Ages, uh, 500 years. And let's hope that my small steps, a uh, small step for uh, humankind, uh, <laughs> will, uh, that somebody will remember me uh, uh, for protecting the, the true Lambic uh, without uh, all those uh, uh, cheating on, on people. Uh, that's my only uh, thing. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it will uh, it will not be my uh, thing anymore because I will be dead uh, long uh, long after. Um, but yeah, if I drink my goose and my lambic every day, I will become 100 years. So there is still a long way to go. Thank you so much for talking to the beer. It's Carol. This was wonderful. Thanks for giving us your thoughts. Cheers. Cheers. And long life.